Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Reaper blog. I'm John, and in this video, we're going to look at customization for the Piano Roll Toolbar. So over the years, I've been slowly adding uh, little actions to the toolbar to make MIDI editing easier. And uh, today I'll show you what I've done. To start, I've got the Dock Editor button. Pretty straightforward. Next to that, there is the Preview Notes on Add slash Edit. So with it off, I can click anywhere and it doesn't do anything. If I click that on, it'll make the sound for that note. Next to that, I've got export, so you can export this MIDI as a file. And uh, that was a little different from the default, which only works on um, files that you record. If you just draw in a MIDI item, it doesn't let you export it. So if you're making your own beats and you're not recording anything with controllers or importing files, then you can't export. It was kind of silly. So uh, export contents as MIDI works great for that. So next to that, I've got note info. If I draw in a note, hit note info. It shows me um, properties. So what note, what channel, velocity, position, length, all that kind of stuff. And you can make changes here. Scales of velocity. You can even do uh, plus or minus. And so uh, minus, do minus 30, hit apply. And it changes the velocity down 30. And that works for multiple note selections, all that kind of stuff. Then I've got note filters. These things are in the standard toolbar, in uh, this toolbar. But anyways, what I use this for most often is um, to make a selection of anything that's super low velocity. It'll hide everything else, and I can delete those notes, and then turn off the filter, and then I've got everything except basically the garbage notes. Next up is uh, humanized notes. So that's useful if you have um, like programmed hi-hats. I like to change the timing by like five to 7%, uh, randomize the velocity a little bit. Uh, you can shift the timing bias to be ahead of the beat or behind the beat. So really, really useful to have that. Next up is transpose MIDI. So it applies to the selected notes or all notes by the semitone, by the scale. Again, really useful, uh, but there's also keyboard shortcuts to do that. Command up and down, I think that does it by default. Shift command changes octaves. I've got the quantize option here, quantize events. also have a quick quantize thing. So if this is here and I hit this, it moves the beginning and end to the grid size. Next to that is there the uh, CC selection follows note selection. Now let me draw in a couple of things here and put in a uh, mod wheel. So draw in some mod wheel. Now with this turned off, I can grab notes, move them around. But with this on, if I grab a note, it's going to move the CC uh, information as well. So I tend to keep that off. So I've got show grid, snap to grid. Now these are actually the wrong icons right now. So. Next to that, I've got split notes on grid. So if I make this 30 second notes, got this note here, I can click this and it splits it on 30 second notes. So next to that, there is uh, presets for the grid size. All of those can be changed by the options down here, but I find this to be a lot quicker. Uh, I just see the number and I could click it and I don't even use the triplets that much, but I find it more useful to have them there since I have all this room. I've got note names. Show velocity, show velocity handles. So I tend to keep those off, but they're handy. After that, I have different view options. So viewing as rectangles, as triangles, and as diamonds. Auto scroll on and off. So if you're zoomed in and press play, screen scrolls. If it's off, it doesn't. After that, I've got Make Notes Legato. If I select these two notes and hit this, it'll meet them in the middle. Piano Roll View as Piano Roll. A drum mode uh, showing the drum map or named notes. Then coloring the MIDI notes by their pitch or by their velocity. I like velocity usually. The last couple ones, Zoom to Content. So if I click this, make them, it's going to zoom in horizontally and vertically to fill the editor with the notes. 
I think I'm actually going to add one there. Insert action. I'm going to add this one. Zoom to selected, and let's choose an icon. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so if I select, got these two notes selected. Yeah, that's cool. And that zooms out. Cool. Then I've got piano roll edit mode, which is a custom action, and drum edit mode. Let me bring up these. So piano edit mode shows the events as rectangles, shows the piano roll view here, and then it shows all note rows. If anything was hidden before, it shows it. Drum edit mode is kind of the opposite. It shows diamonds, sets the piano roll view to drum map, and it hides the unused and unnamed note rows. So in this MIDI performance, since there's only a few notes, if I click this, it's going to hide all the other notes. I can't access those unless I go into the other mode. So that's it for my MIDI piano roll toolbar. It's always going to be a work in progress, but the actions I have make editing in Reaper pretty quick, and hopefully you get some ideas to speed up your workflow. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any tips for me on what to add to the MIDI piano roll toolbar, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out reaperblog.net for lots more. Thanks again. Goodbye.